So excited about today's sponsor, SoulGuard, a premium and sustainable travel gear company that's near and dear to the StarTalk family. This one is special, people. Come on, see for yourself. That's Mars, by the way. For a limited time, SoulGuard and StarTalk have teamed up to provide you with limited edition out of this world travel gear. Now, check out this moon one right here. It's even got Montez Apeninus on it. And yes, Neil made sure of it. Now the suitcase is called the carry-on closet because it has a patented built-in closet system that looks like it was invented by Jedi's and makes packing and unpacking a thing of the past. Now this is a limited edition collection, but it not only includes suitcases featuring the amazing surface textures of the moon and Mars, there's also a backpack and a watch, and get this, they're all made with ocean-bound plastic. That's right, with Solgar products, Every order saves 229 plastic bottles from the ocean. Now we're over the moon excited about this collaboration and you should be too. Learn more at soulguard.co slash startalk or visit the link in the video description. This is a limited edition collaboration. When they're gone, they're gone. So make sure you use the discount code startalk at checkout for an exclusive discount. Almost as exclusive as going to space with a billionaire. Chuck, we're back. Yes, sir. <laughs> Do you like these these explainers? Of course. I uh, be one because Neil Splaining has always been good <laughs> Neil for explaining. me. Neil Splaining has that's always a good thing. been okay. good for me. <laughs> okay, you know, uh, all other splainings are not good. Man yeah, you know, that's exactly. Man explaining ain't good. You know what I mean? Black explaining, <laughs> white explaining ain't good. But Neil Splaining, it works. That's a whole other thing. Uh, yeah. I, I, thank you for that. Those words of encouragement. So I'll just continue. <laughs> cool. And what do you got? So I got today, we've all heard of gravity assists for of spacecraft. Yeah. Yes, that's uh that was in um, Space Jam, right? It's a gravity assist. <laughs> oh, that was oh, that's it, people. I just retired. It's over. Because that was the worst I've ever done in my life. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> So a gravity assist, the way people typically think about it is you you send out a spacecraft and you want it to give it more speed than it currently has. Right. And so you find some planet that it sort of falls towards. And of course, it'll speed up as it does that. Right. And we think of it as kind of a slingshot. Where it fl Obviously, it falls not towards it, but towards the side of it. Right? Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not a gravity assist. It's a gravity right. crash. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you want it to sort of swing by, and it picks up speed in so doing, and it flings out the other side. And if you, if you angle it right and position it right, you could head towards your next destination. And as a result, you can have multiple destinations in the same voyage. So famously, Voyager one and two, this is back in the 1970s when it was launched, they had trajectories that, well, let me say that differently. The solar system's planets were configured in such a way that it could get multiple planetary assists, right? multiple gravitational assists. And at, by the time it was done, it had so many gravitational assists, it had enough energy to leave the solar system entirely. Wow. And you could end up doing that without using a very big rocket to begin with. Right. So you're, you're basically exploiting the gravitational attraction of planets rather than for your speed, rather than spending money on fuel. So it's the poor man's way to get nice. out of the solar yeah. system. It's, it's basically cosmic drafting. Mm, drafting. Oh, I like that. Very cosmic good. drafting. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, why should I pedal? Let this sucker pedal for me. <laughs> Think about this. As you approach a planet and its gravity attracts you, everyone has said and it believes and thinks that it pulls you in and then flings you out the other side. But wait a minute. Yeah, just like uh, just like uh, there used to be for me with women at a nightclub. Oh, is that how that worked for you? Yeah, okay. man. There, there was an attraction. <laughs> pull me in. And they'd be like, oh, no, 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 no. You got, nah, -uh. Out the other side. See out you. The other side. See you, brother. <laughs> Completely symmetric picture there, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, so the problem with thinking of it that way is the same gravity that's pulling you in is also preventing you from leaving. Right. Okay, so you'll speed up as you fall in, but now as you try to escape, the gravity's saying, no, I'm pulling you back. Right. 
So it turns out if you look at the pure gravity picture, it is exactly symmetric to the planet. Right. Okay. The planet pulls you in, you gain speed. You have maximum speed right when you're passing the planet. Right. Now you want to exit the planet, the planet starts pulling you back. Right. So Every your time speed I try to get out. <laughs> you, your speed falling in and your speed going back is an exact mirror image of your motion. Okay, so then the question is, how do I end okay. up getting all this damn speed? <laughs> Where are this slingshot effect? Okay, this is something that's hardly ever explained, and that's why we have these explainer videos. Cool. So, here's the answer. It turns out, if you approach a planet from behind, okay, okay, there it is, orbiting the sun, Right. And you approach it from behind in its orbit. Right. Not only will the gravity pull you in, mm -hmm. but you will gain speed just to catch up with the planet in its orbit. That makes sense. Yes. Right. H how are we going to catch up? How are we going to hit the planet, come near the planet, unless you have the planet's orbital speed? Right. The planet's orbital speed has nothing to do with the planet. With the planet's gravity. Correct. Right. Okay. So even though the gravity is symmetric, all the speed and energy you gain falling in, the planet takes back away from you. That's right. symmetric. Right. But the speeds you get from catching up with the planet in the orbit is not symmetric. Raw, look at that. Okay. And so what actually happened is you were tugging on the planet. Okay. As the planet was moving and you were speeding up because of this. But what it means is you stole some of the planet's orbital energy to do this. Wow. They don't tell you about that. That's No, they don't. So you basically, you approach the planet from behind. <laughs> and you just like. Don't make a ghetto yo, mugging out of this. Yo. <laughs> yo. <laughs> give me some of that speed. <laughs> don't turn around. Don't look at my face. Don't look, don't at, look my at my face. face. <laughs> Just give me the speed. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> needs to get hurt here. <laughs> <laughs> and then you take it and you keep going and, and you got it. the thing and, and it doesn't. It. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't have it and you have it. So this these are this is the art of the of the slingshot. Dude, that is. That's pretty amazing. Now and it but, makes sense. Yeah. And, and you can slingshot off of anything. Right. We've had planets orbit the sun, launch from Earth, and then slingshot around Earth twice. Right. Wow. Okay. On two can now it's, it takes longer, right? It's that's if you're not in a hurry, you do this. You and it use Earth to slingshot. You could slingshot off the moon. You can slingshot off of Mars. Okay? It doesn't matter what planet you want to slingshot from. Right. In the case of Voyager, uh, Voyager 1, I think it was, it's slung shot. What's past tense of two sling shot? It's uh, slung shotted. Sling, yeah, yeah. <laughs> slang shot. <I> slang <laughs> shot. <laughs> it was slang shot. But anyway. <laughs> it's, it's slang shit off of, off of Jupiter. Right. And so people think, well, Jupiter has big gravity. It'll get a huge speed. It's only getting Jupiter's orbital speed. Just right. make that clear. Look at that. That's, and right. Jupiter's traveling slower than planets that orbit closer in. So the gravitational pull cancels out, but the orbital speed is what's left over, and that's what you ended up stealing in order to get the speed to go. And if you want an inverse mugging, which <laughs> no one will actually want to do in space, <laughs> right. if you, you can fall towards the planet right, opposite the direction it's traveling. Oh, wow. Okay. And if you do that, then you have sped up the planet. It eats some of your or your your uh, uh, trajectory's energy, and you'll come out the other side moving slower than you did before. Oh, so you could actually use it as a break. As a break, that's correct. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. this is that's fascinating stuff. Yeah, that's if you cool. want, if you need it to break in space, that's a way. And it takes a long time to like line up and make it all happen. So there you have it. Wow, look at that. Cosmic drafting and space breaking. That's amazing. <laughs> and so the more the more times you do this, the more energy you have, the more speed you accumulate. And that's how we leave the solar system. Cool.
Yeah. And you might ask, but you didn't. Uh, if you if you <laughs> dra- if you if you slingshot off of Mars like twenty times, like w- what happens to the Mars orbit itself if you're taking away its energy? You, right. you haven't asked that. No, um, I don't. Because you, know, you don't care. I, I was going to say, <laughs> you know, I'm not worried about Mars. <laughs> okay, I think Mars is going to be okay. But anyway, what does happen? Let's say, if over, 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 over. I mean, you're 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 basically siphoning off a tiny little bit of energy. I'm siphoning off a tiny little bit of energy. So, so uh, okay. So here's the thing. Uh, you know, maybe in a trillion years, if you did this every day, it would matter. But the mass of these objects relative to the mass of our measly probes, okay, it, that ratio is so huge that it's like a gnat flying full speed ahead into an elephant. The right. elephant doesn't say, but, you know, watch out. Right. <laughs> <The> ele- <laughs> Quit your shoving. This, right. the, the, the mass difference is so huge that it's not relevant. It's not important in what's going on in the solar system. But in addition, take Earth, for example, in any given day, we plow through 100 tons of meteors every single day. Wow. Tons. So this stuff falling and 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 this stuff, that, so it's, don't worry about it. We have other things we should be worrying about, like climate change. <laughs> yes. Tell me about it. <laughs> you know, so if you want to worry about, oh my gosh, what? How about Mars? Where about your own damn planet? <laughs> now, how about that? I'm all about that. Speaking of Mars, you said worry about your own planet. Don't <laughs> worry did. about Mars. <laughs> and so I got both of them in one. <laughs> I got a Mars bag from the Out of This World uh, collection from Soul Guard, right? And check this out: every single suitcase that they make pulls about 229 bottles of plastic out of the environment. So really? here we yes. So here we are with Mars and we worried about our own planet at the same time. Boom. Wait, wait. So you're saying I should drink more plastic bottles no, so you can make no. more of those that luggage. No. <laughs> Is that the takeaway? No. <laughs> no, I'm, no. Sa- I'm saying for the idiots that drink plastic bottles, this <laughs> okay. is part of the solution. And okay. for the smart people who want to buy this and help, that's what they should do. Okay, so so it's not only gets the bottles out. Uh, if you like the universe, if you love the universe, you got one that looks like Mars. Yep, that's right. That's right. Very cool. 12 million plastic bottles pulled in 2021, right? See, that's what we're doing here. Wait, Chuck. Do I recognize Valis Marineris on that? Really? <laughs> Don't pretend like you I'm like, because here's what I'm saying. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it looks like a high resolution image of Mar- Martian surface. It's not just like red, all right? No. Pretending to be Mars. It is Mars. It's got very good detail on the surface. That's so, highly yeah. recognizable if you're Mars fluent, which apparently you're not. Uh, no, okay, I don't speak Martian, I'm sorry. <laughs> Valles Marineris is basically the Mars Valley, and it's a huge canyon, way bigger than the Grand Canyon wow. here on Earth. Okay. And it's, it's a very striking scar in the Martian surface. Clearly, Mars has had a whole lot of activity long ago, mm-hmm. shaping and forming and, and, and reshaping its surface, and that's one of the bits of evidence of it. So that 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 adds to the authenticity of what you got in your hands there. Very like cool. It. I'm just going to let you talk while I sit here and play Black Van or White. <laughs> Is that how that goes? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I need a vowel, though. <laughs> that's right. Uh, yeah, I got a I got a few of them right here. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, there you, there you go. I, I can I can tell you this that. There's nothing more boring than people's luggage. <laughs> so think about it. You're absolutely right. By the way, speaking so, of that. So now there's a piece of luggage that, like, that's good. I want one. There's Send some exciting one. looks. By the way, the cool thing about this, not only is it, like, it's Mars right here, which means that when it comes can't, can't down. Can't argue with Mars. When can't it comes down Mars. the chute, right, okay, you'll Mars be able down to the conveyor belt. Mars is coming down the conveyor belt. You'll be able to recognize yours. And as a matter of fact, you can turn to somebody and go, Get your ass to Mars. And <laughs> but don't take my luggage while you do it. <laughs> okay, very yeah. cool. Gotta I'm love glad y'all are working on good stuff. Gotta love this company. Soul Guard. All right. All right, Chuck. So that's all we have. Dude, that was experience. great. I love right. it. So now you know, and I never thought to analogize 
a gravity assist with a mugging. <laughs> I'm glad I could be of service. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Chuck. Oh, as always, <laughs> with those socially enlightened analogies that you give us here on Star Talk. So that's yet another Star Talk explainer. As always, I bid you to keep looking up. <laughs>